Hello everyone, Onerous here with a little uh, tips and tricks on calculating ratios for various components when you're first starting out in Factorio. Uh, so I'm going to keep it fairly simple, we're not going to go into too much detail, but we will be doing quite a bit of math, so be prepared uh, with your calculators ready if you're that way inclined. And what we're going to look at is just some of the early game things that you come across that really need a little bit of numbers behind them. And in particular we're going to look at uh, power setup with boilers and steam engines. We're going to have a bit of a look at the classic smelting stack, um, which I'll explain a bit when we get into it. Uh, the rate number of miners you need to fill a belt. And finally, a little bit of a look at uh, assembler ratios just using green circuits as an example. Okay, so first off, we are looking at um, power. And probably before I start, I'll just let you know this is all done in sandbox mode. Um, so in sandbox mode, you basically have uh, unlimited resources. You can auto insta craft whatever you want and place it anywhere you want. There's no player. Um, you get things, weird things like uh, this electricity energy interface, which is a command line to bring it in, uh, which you can set up to supply infinite power. Like uh, this one over here is supplying basically infinite power, and this one here is just a infinite power drain. Um, so what I've got, uh, oh, the other thing too is uh, this here is a infinite chest, which just constantly fills with whatever you ask for here, and this is just a, a loader that pumps it out at 45 items a second. Alright, so let us begin with uh, power. So it's one of the first things that you will build that you'll think, oh boy, how many steam engines, how many boilers do I need, how many offshore pumps do I need? Now the, the really quick answer is um, two boilers, uh, two steam engines for every boiler and 20 boilers on one offshore pump. So now let's uh, see why that is. Um, okay, so when I hover over a, uh, an item, you see on the right there is an info panel. And in there, the information says that a boiler consumes 1.8 megawatts of power. Um, so that is burning enough coal to produce 1.8 megawatts. Uh, and that power is then converted into steam. Uh, and now the steam engine converts that steam into power. Uh, and the power output it does, each one puts out 900 kilowatts. So, uh, therefore, 1.8 megawatts divided by 900 kilowatts gives you two. So you can pr provide uh, two enough steam for two steam engines from the one boiler. Uh, and you'll see here I've put three on this one, and you'll notice this one is not outputting anything at all. Uh, if you look over on the right-hand bar, again, right down the bottom, you see performance is basically nothing. And these two are... Um, producing the rest. So that's how we get the ratio of two steam engines to every boiler. Uh, now the number of boilers to an offshore pump uh, doesn't actually necessarily have to do with boilers so much. Um, a boiler converts water into steam directly at a ratio of one to one. Um, and when we hover over the steam engine on the right, we see that the fluid consumption uh, is 30 per second. So uh, when we look over here, this outputs uh, 1,200 a second. So 1,200 divided by 30 is 40. So one offshore pump can provide enough water slash steam for 40 boilers, um, uh, 40 steam engines, sorry. And you need one boiler for every two steam engines. So if we've got 40 steam engines, we've got 20 boilers. So that's how we calculate um, two steam engines per boiler and 20 boilers per offshore pump. All right, if you're still with me, great. Let's have a look at smelting stacks. So smelting stacks are a common way to get a full belt of iron plate, copper plate. Um, steel is a little bit more advanced, but we're just going to stick with the basics. So on the right here, I've got a yellow belt of with uh, stone furnaces. So this is the first kind of thing you'll you'll end up with. Um, again, I've got infinity chests feeding it all, um, the raw materials it needs, so don't worry about those. You'll feel, feel, you will feed those from your own mining operation, which we'll get to next. Um, but 
the uh, the quick the quick calculation uh, well the, the quick answer is you need 48 stone furnaces to fill a yellow belt with iron or copper plate um, and when we get to red belts uh, a red belt goes at double the speed so you would need uh, 96 stone furnaces um, but at the same time you should also be going to steel furnaces which work twice as fast as a stone furnace so that just brings us back down to uh, the 48 and so what I've set up here is a smelting stack and we're gonna just quickly uh, do the math on it so how did we get to 48 furnaces for a yellow belt 48 stone furnaces for a yellow belt well first off a yellow belt goes at 15 items a second so we want to be producing 15 iron plate a second if we look at iron plate it takes 3.2 seconds uh, to produce an iron plate now that might be a, uh, a little bit seem like a really odd number um, there is some history behind that which you can look at previous versions had different numbers uh, but it, it the number is now actually quite nice because it makes the math work out really well um, so if it takes 3.2 seconds to produce if we had 3.2 stone furnaces producing iron plate they would produce one item every second but we want to produce 15 items a second so we need to multiply 3.2 by 15 and if you pump that into a calculator you'll see that comes out to exactly 48 um, now one thing to note if I hover over here again look on the right hand panel for a stone furnace and you see it has a crafting speed of 1 um, this makes a difference and we'll come into that with assembly machines later um, but importantly when we move over to our red belt design so red belts take 30 items per second um, and to do that with uh, with stone furnace obviously you just need to double the amount um, that we were using for yellow belts uh, and that would give us 96 uh, but if you look here the crafting speed of a steel furnace is 2 so it's twice as fast uh, meaning the same amount uh, 48 will actually produce the uh, the right amount the 30 per second and uh, if you want to do the math on that um, it's 3.2 seconds the crafting time uh, divide that by 2 and you get 1.6 is how many steel furnaces you actually need to produce uh, that per second um, one per second so 1.6 steel furnaces produces one iron plate a second and then multiply that by 30 and strangely enough you get 48 uh, so that is smelting stacks uh, now let's jump over to mining so you've got to supply your um, smelting stacks obviously in the normal game when you're not in sandbox you don't have well if you're not cheating you don't have access to infinite chests uh, so how many miners how many electric miners do we need to supply that um, again working off our uh, yellow belt here has fifth needs 15 items a second to uh, to fully operate we find out uh, the mining speed uh, well okay the first thing that's not immediately uh, shown in game and uh, you would have to uh, do a little bit of research to find is that uh, iron ore, copper ore, stone and um, uh, where do we have our, yep here it is, and coal all have a uh, mining speed of one uh, well it takes it takes one time unit to, to mine it uh, now if we look at the electric miners on the right hand side you'll see their mining speed is uh, 0.5 per second uh, now that can easily be misread as um, you're doing half a second for a mining but it is actually 0.5 units per second so it is producing uh, one, it is mining one iron ore in this case every two seconds uh, so if we want 13 items a second uh, then obviously what we need to do is have 30 of them now uh, it is as simple as that and you'll see here I've got uh, 30 here 
Uh, that just happened to work out really nicely. Um, over here, you'll see I have 34. Uh, if you were to wire all this up in one direction, you would overfill a belt and um, and it wouldn't work. Now, you might be asking, well, why aren't these miners here working? Um, if you also look in the right-hand bar, you'll see their productivity plus 40%, um, which is a bonus that you research throughout the game. Now, I just can't happen to see it. There, here it is up here. Uh, so when I in sandbox mode, I enabled all technologies. And as you research more technologies, um, you can increase the mining productivity. Uh, but with a base productivity plus 0%, uh, you will need 30 to fill a belt. Um, now, obviously, yellow belt. Just double that, um, and you'll see that you'll need 60. And again, with no productivity bonuses. All right, so that is power, smelting stacks, and mining. Um, automation, obviously, is then the next step, and that's where assembly machines come in. So here, this is a, uh, a fairly standard, if standard, can be used with factory a commonly used arrangement for green circuits which is one of the first really big items that you want to use a lot of uh, throughout the game um, so let us go into the recipe so the recipe for green electronic circuits uh, is you will produce one every it crafts at one every half second and it requires one iron plate and three copper cables so in reality, um, when you're calculating all these things, it's best to look at a, a base of uh, per second. So this produces two per second. And it requires two iron plate a second and six copper cable a second. Now, uh, the resources, we can just feed in the bus and, and feed across directly. But copper cable needs to be crafted. And copper cable produces uh, two copper cable every half a second so it produces four copper cable a second and if you remember what we just said we need six copper cable a second so you actually need uh, one and a half machines making copper cable per every green circuit so here we have three copper cable machines feeding two green circuits so these three machines uh, are producing 12 copper cable a second and perfectly aligned uh, these machines are then um, use these two machines are using the 12 copper cable per second so that is the ratios we needed now um, if these are producing two a second we've got one two three four five six seven eight so they should be producing 16 a second and you're probably asking well why isn't this belt full then why is this belt that can only handle 15 items a second uh, not full when we're producing uh, 16 green circuits per second. Well, the answer is assembly machines. So these assembly machines here, assembly machines one, have a crafting speed of 0.5. Uh, so when we're calculating everything on a base rate, uh, it actually takes twice as long for an assembly machine one to make it. So this is actually only making uh, one every second. And it's uh, using three copper cable a second. So do we need less copper cable producers? Well, no, of course not, because they're also producing at a crafting speed of 0.5. So they're producing um, two copper cable every second. So again, six copper cable a second producing two uh, green circuits a second, electronic circuits a second. And then our eight here um, is just producing eight a second and that's why this belt is only half full um, so you can apply that uh, well let's before I go any further uh, let's quickly have a look at the other assembly machines um, so assembly machines 2 uh, they have a crafting speed of 0.75 and assembly machines 3 have a crafting speed of 1.25 so if I made all of these uh, all of these blues, we should see a marked increase in the uh, the output of of this belt, and immediately you can see, yep, uh, it's not quite full because they don't have a crafting speed of one, um, but it is 
pretty close. And finally, if we were to put up Assembly Machines 3 here, they are marked improvement in speed. Look at that. And suddenly, like, this one here can't even put anything on the belt um, because it's already full. And there we have it. All right. Um, so, don't worry too much about the crafting speed of the assembly machines. Um, that's my biggest advice. Because if you focus everything on a, a base crafting of one and just do your calculations of how many you need on each of those, you generally won't have a problem because you'll, uh, again, generally, you'll always be using assembly machine one feeding assembly machines one or assembly machine two feeding assembly machine two. So the relative speed is the same. The only time this would ever start to really trick you up is when you start using things like refineries and chemical plants uh, that don't have the different crafting speed changes. Uh, they're just crafting speed one. So if you're trying to feed an assembly machine into a chemical plant, um, you'll actually need twice the number of assembly machines you think you need uh, to get stuff in there. Not, not that that situation arises very often. Anyway, I don't want to confuse you too much. Um, that is just a, a general intro, and as you can see, it does get a lot more complex uh, later on, but important to remember um, when you're starting out, You'll see things like if you put too much of something, like here we've got too many steam engines and this one's just not working. Um, it's not immediately obvious too to a new player as well. Like you can see there's, if you look at it, there's no steam coming off here and you've got to know to look in that info panel on the right. Um, smelting stacks. Uh, if you want to actually fill a belt with an item, then yes, you need to follow these ratios. Uh, and again, if you want to fill a belt with miners, you want to use your 30 miners for the yellow belt. Um, and when you start automation, good luck, because that is what Factorio is all about. And going through the numbers yourself and figuring out what you need to make uh, stuff you want as quickly as you want it made, that is the, the fun of Factorio. Uh, so I hope you found this video helpful, and I'd love to hear your comments below. Uh, if you've got any more requests on areas that you'd like more information on, um, I'm by no means an expert, but I do, I do love Factorio, and I'm always willing to learn it myself, and then pass that knowledge on in one of these informational videos. So thanks for watching, and uh, if you like this, you can check out my uh, other YouTube series, Factor Let's Learn Factorio Together, where I after a long break from playing Factorio and never actually having launched a rocket, um, I'm going through and just trying to launch a rocket as best I can. All right, and uh, I'd also love, if you really love the video, I'd love it if you subscribed as well. All right, thanks for your time and enjoy Factorio.